So welcome back friends. I've got a fun video for everyone today. Today we're going to be testing the huge Japanese katana boy against the hundred year old Japanese whaleback saw. <laughs> Let's see who comes out on top. So what in the world do we have here? This is unusual and I've never seen anything like this before, not in person. I've seen them online. This is a very year old, uh, very old. I'm guessing probably close to a hundred year old. As far as I can tell in my research, there's not a lot of information about these. And I don't even know for sure if this really is a whaleback saw or a Japanese crosscut saw. I don't really know. But the interesting thing about it is that it's very old and it came with the original sheath. My thanks go out again to, uh, to my good friend, Ken, uh, who always sends the most interesting things. He sent not only one, not one saw, but two saws with the sheaths. Isn't that cool? This one has a completely different tooth pattern here. Um, and the reason why I'm not, and this one's more of a crosscut style. This is very similar to the American crosscut saws uh, in that, that it has a gullet in there. We'll talk more about that later, uh, another video. But this one here, I find to be the most interesting because it is very, very sharp. I took it in on my file bench and I was gonna work on the teeth a little bit and check the set. It's got a great set in it. The teeth are still sticky, sticky sharp. And I think that it's really an interesting comparison uh, to have these two saw together. together. If we look at the cutting edge, they're almost identical. They're within an inch or so. So I think that, that it makes a very good contest. What we have here, of course, is the Silky Katana Boy. This is one of their larger saws. This is state-of-the-art cutting cutting tech, state, state, <laughs> latest, greatest technology here uh, in Japanese saw making. Um, and this of course is the old school. So let's find out today if this can even hang with the old one, maybe it does better. A couple of interesting facts. And again, I'm, I don't know a lot about these saws because there's so little information about there, but what I'm seeing from here and being kind of an experienced cross American crosscut saw filer, I see some similarities in that uh, there are, uh, see the teeth here are smaller. And the reason why they do teeth like this is, is to start the cut. Uh, so you have a finer, a finer saw to cut or tooth to get the saw started. And then after you've established a kerf, then you have the nice big ripping teeth. And the other thing that's really interesting about this is that it has uh, the angle, meaning the way that they're rocked forward. If you look and see that these teeth are rocked, are rocked more forward than the ones in the back there, being this is where you get your power cut, your, your big aggressive cut, your big stroke right there. Um, it, of course, as all Japanese saws, it cuts on the pole, uh, where the American saws cut on the push, but so does does the um, so do the silkies. So they, the Japanese have always went with that, um, and there are benefits to both ways. This is kind of an interesting take on it. Look at the sheath. Isn't that cool? They probably uh, can only imagine the history of this. It's got the Japanese writing on there. Single handle. That's interesting. Yeah, you could get two hands on there. I'll probably try to cut with two hands, uh, but we'll see how it goes. I've never in my life, I've never held one. Uh, I've never cut with one, so I'm curious to see who comes out on top. Let's, uh, let's put them together. We'll time the event and, uh, and see what happens. Is it supposed to be used as one-handed saw? I'm not sure. So let's Let's uh, reset the timer here, and I'll do the best that I can. I'll give you my experience. Oh boy, you gotta, you gotta use it right. The handle to me is weird. I mean, you take it. You have to be a gorilla to do this one-handed all day. What was that like? Okay, so how was that experience, my first cut with this style of saw? Well, I wasn't very good at it. Um, what I started to learn in the middle, I was kind of getting it, it seemed to uh, have a better effect, uh, better luck by rocking it. I mean, pulling and cutting and then kind of seesawing down through the wood, which is the case with some saws. Um, 
being a straight, it's a straight cut like that. Um, you'll notice, you remember the cross cut saws, the American ones, they have that crescent in them. Uh, they're pretty forgiving and they don't, they don't stick. You know, when you pull it and they don't stick too much because of, uh, because of that curve, this is perfectly flat. And so it takes more skill. Uh, you have to, it's really important where you go in and the angle that you're coming out and it punishes you, it bites you if you don't do it. So what I'd say about that is that I would say that the saw is not a bad design or, or ineffective. Uh, it just takes practice to learn how to do it. It's, it's, a, it's a craftsman saw and there's a skill to it. Um, what I think of the handle, the, I don't like the handle. The handle is really terrible. It's really big, easy for me to say. It's probably Craftsmen have probably been using this for thousands of years. Um, it's not what, not what I'm used to. That would be uh, would be probably a more uh, um, culturally sensitive thing to say. It's not what I'm used to. You can't really get two hands on it unless you put one hand on top of the other, um, and that that, that does kind of work. But I would imagine the Japanese, you know, they're they they'll they seem to not be in such a rush or haven't the craftsmen and they, they would probably just grab it and start sawing and when they got through it, they got through it. It wasn't uh, maybe necessarily about production. I don't know, I'm only speculating. Uh, the cut is very nice, very smooth. Um, overall, it, it is effective, it does work, um, but uh, there, were some ch I, I, there were some challenges for me. Next up, the Silky Big Boy. As we know, this is the, or the Katana Boy, excuse me, this is the um, believe it or not, this is the small one. This is the small Katana Boy, and there are two other big ones. The big one not in production, but you can have them, and you can have these too. These are pretty amazing saws in their own right, and they fold. Uh, but this being a state-of-the-art uh, grind on it that is uh, very difficult. Most people are not going to be able to sharpen it, self-service it, but they last a long time, and they are good. So let's see how much, how good, how much better uh, than the maybe a whale back saw. All right, here we go. Start the timer and cut. <laughs> That's amazing. All right, so what's the conclusion here? What do we come away with? Well, you know, I would say for all intents and purposes, not intensive purposes, as I usually say, um, this is a good saw for the wall. It looks co cool. It uh, has a lot of interesting history, a uh, good conversation piece, beautiful to look at. Um, is it something that I'm going to, I'm gonna use every day, not when these are around, uh, in, in all honesty. But let's say that that's for now. That's when we have. That's when ev assuming everything is available, and and also assuming uh, that a guy has enough money uh, to buy one of these saws, which is they're expensive. What are they? 150 to between that and 200 dollars. A replacement blade is probably gonna cost you half of that. Um, you know, that's something to consider. Also, not being able to service it, not being able to sharpen it, most guys can't. Where this one uh, can be sharpened, can be set traditionally, and I don't know what these cost. I've been, I mean, I've seen some, I don't know the difference between one or the other, but I've seen some sell from anywhere from $15 to a couple, you know, maybe $100, $75 on eBay for a really nice one, but I have seen some pretty nice ones for $15, $20. Um, that will cut as well. So, uh, what did we learn? Well, <laughs> we learned that they both cut wood, uh, but this one cuts better. No question about it. Pretty phenomenal, phenomenal saw. Uh, I've got another fun test if you haven't seen it. Uh, we put this saw up against an American crosscut saw, a one man American crosscut saw, and Brian and I did a speed race. And, and that's kind of interesting. I'll put that up here. Uh, you can click on that and watch that. But uh, again, thank you, Ken, for these very interesting saws. Um, they are beautiful. They are certainly still usable after 100 years, after all this, this time.
but you know, as things change, have moved on, uh, so has saw technology. People get real nostalgic for old stuff. You know, myself, I, I can easily fall into that camp. But uh, whenever you do that and you think about how cool the old cars were, uh, go get in a car that was built in the 60s or 70s and run up to 100 miles an hour and then try to stop it. Uh, and then you'll get, a, uh, uh, you'll get a, a very real lesson on how far automobiles have come uh, in the last 40, 50 years. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.